Aloha, I'm Marcia Joyner, and today is Flag Day, so I'm wearing my flag. And welcome, welcome to Navigating the Journey. Navigating the Journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices for the end of life, and to assist people to talk about their wishes. It's time to transform our culture so that we begin to talk about these issues, to have conversations about your wishes, your desires, your options, your choices. And today, we are going to talk to a dear friend of mine, <laughs> a person I have known for, okay, more years than we can count. Stop counting. <laughs> Jimmy Toriyama, as most of you know, he has been a part of the community for forever. Yeah, long time. For a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Jimmy. Thank Jimmy, um, I met Jimmy when he was with the Democratic Party. That's when I was 21. <laughs> okay, when you were 21. When we were 21. Okay. Yes, when we were we 21. We were 21, yes. yes. But, and, and he has worked for, uh, we, we had the best time when he was chair of Oahu County. It was, it was good, good. Do you remember? Yeah. And we did, speaking of navigating the journey, boy, did we do. We did a book Remember, we gave books, brand new books, to all the children in schools mm. that would other night was get books, right. and they were new books. And the legislator from that district had to go and sit and read to the children. Mm. You remember, Jim? Yeah, that's wonderful. It oh, was. Yeah. It was. It was one of the best things <coughs> I've ever done. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs> we did a lot of good things back we then. We did. Huh? We yeah. did a lot of good things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And most people don't think of the Democrats that way, but we did a lot of good stuff. Mm. Now, you, uh, but in line with navigating the journey, you are the creator, founder, president, what's the right title? Well, I, of I, Mindful yeah. Hawaii. Hawaii. Yeah. Tell us, what is Mindful Hawaii? Well, Mindful Hawaii was uh, created, started, at least the idea uh, was, be, was germinated from the, about four years ago. And uh, it's been steadily growing. And Mindful Hawaii today is an organization uh, uh, that, that, that tries to grow the mindfulness in our, in our communities and encourage individuals to get involved in mindfulness practice. And we'd like to move mindfulness practices into organizations and communities and, of course, society in general. Because we believe fundamentally that when more and more people start meditating, uh, there will be a shift in the way we are as a society. So living mindful or mindful living mm -hmm. is, is, well, mindful, mindfulness is actually a state of being which is actually developing a capacity to be present in the moment, to live in the moment, and to be actually living in the moment uncritically, which unjudgmentally. And I think when we begin to arrive at that level of, of, of presence, if you will, uh, I think we become more uh, empathetic uh, and more compassionate, and we become more open to other people, including yourself, by the way, which all of us are not aware of the, of the dynamic that goes on inside of ourselves, our inner journey. And I think mindfulness helps, to, uh, helps us to be in touch with that journey, and so we become more aware of who we are as an individual. And so how long have you been doing here in Hawaii? Mindfulness. Mindfulness. Your well, organization. Here. My organization has been, uh, uh, it's been around since three years ago at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least four, three or four years ago. And so, as part of the organization, do you, you teach meditation? Do you 
what, what, okay, what happened? Yeah, I'm glad you asked the, that question. If, if I say, okay, I want to be a member, what, what will happen? Yeah. Well, if you, if, you know, because we encourage people to, to get into the practice, which is really mindfulness practice, which is meditation at, 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 its, you know, at its core, uh, we don't teach meditation per se, although we bring in different people who teach different styles of meditation uh -huh. to kind of let our community know what goes on, right, in terms of the meditation world. Uh, but we also recommend places where uh, they can visit and maybe get involved in and start the practice. And by the way, uh, I, I, am, I am a believer that Although meditation practices are uh, a very efficient, effective way of getting, getting in touch with yourself, I also think there are other ways in which you can do that, simply by sitting quietly every day, enjoying that space with yourself, or just taking a walk in the park in the, in the quiet and the peace and, 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 and the beauty of the day and soaking all of that in and that will somehow create a, a space within you which I call that mindfulness space. <laughs> but we are an organization that's not in there for teaching mindfulness per se. But we, what we do is we try to organize the community so that we begin to leverage, organize and leverage the many people who are actually involved in mindfulness practices today into a, 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 a kind of movement, if you will, that will impact our Hawaii in a better and greater yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. I, now, I heard some time ago that there was a legislator, mm -hmm. a congressman, yeah. who wrote a book on mindfulness. Tim Ryan. What's his name? Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan. Is he still in Congress? Yes. Uh, he is currently serving in Congress. Um, and the latest rumor that I heard is that he may be running for governor in Ohio. Ohio? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't know, but I, I wish he would stay in Congress as well. You know? Oh, we need him. We need him there. So he was saying about in the schools. He thought that mm -hmm. starting yes. in the schools where children us for bullying, for playground, oh, for, yeah. for all of those things. And he had great success. Mm -hmm. Naturally, by the time they show it on television, you've had success. He's his mindfulness uh, advocate in Congress, if you will. And he has done a lot to um, generate programs throughout the country, of course in Ohio as well, in education, in, in um, 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 public safety areas like police, uh, safe, you know, um, um, TSA type employees, for example. They need, they need it's very stressful. Yeah. So, so mindfulness practice can help them to de-stress, decompress, if you will. So their response to the public is much better. Now, talking about Tim Ryan, you know that he wrote that book, right? Yes. Called uh, Mindful Nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is now in demand all over the place where people want him. So we want to bring him to Hawaii as well. Oh, great. I've been in touch with his office, and we've been having discussions. But I, I noticed that since um, the outcome of the presidential election, he has, and then the, 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 the dynamics in the House of Representatives, uh, he has become a, a very important person there, and he's been speaking all over the place. Well, I'm sure, but especially in the Midwest. Today, with the uh, shooting of the mm. congressional people today, I'm sure he's in demand. Yes, he is. Yeah. Because they've got to calm this mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. And well, that was just so horrible this morning. Yeah. But anyway, let's get back to Hawaii. Okay. So, in the schools, mindfulness in the schools. Well, Mindful Hawaii has, for example, a, uh, well, in order to move mindfulness into uh, various sectors of our Hawaii, uh, we have organized or beginning to organize committees that work in these sectors, and one of them is an education committee. So, when we look at mindfulness in education, uh, it's, it's a growing proposition. There's a lot of schools that are now interested in doing this alongside what they call Habits of Mind schools, which is also very powerful and has, I think, at its base, a mindfulness practice. Mm. Oh, there you are. Oh, is that me? That's you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's great. So I, I have learned that um, um, Lake Jardine School is is uh, is a complete completely uh, uh, mindful school, and St. Andrew's Priory is another one that's also. Mm -hmm. And Punahou and Iolani have classes that that's, that uses mindfulness practice. A public school system, there are mind, you know, like for example, um, Waikiki Elementary School. They're a well-known school. And they're a habits of mind school, and uh, that's that that movement is also growing. With the new superintendent, and she comes from, you know, the mainland and mm. where they do all kind of mm. interesting things. Do you think it will make a difference? Uh, in terms of uh, the mindfulness in throughout the system, as opposed to just one school saying I can do it, do you think that having a new well, superintendent? I, I, think, I think for her, she really wants to ride the wave of something that could make a big difference in the school system. Uh, I think she would she should look very seriously at um, um, promoting mindfulness throughout the school system. Now, I, I say promoting because I don't want to say mandate because once you oh, get no, in, that's, that's, that, 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 that's, that's the surefire sure way to make it to not make happen. It, yeah. Make it not happen. Yes. <laughs> but I, I think it would be a good thing because the, 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 the research has been shown, has been showing that school classes throughout the country that have been involved in mindfulness practice have better school classroom climates, you know? so. Mm -hmm. And then the school climate, too, is influenced by the fact that their students are, are more calm, less stressed, and more involved in, 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 in their own lives in relationship to school. And I, I think that's a very positive thing. Um, I mean, it's not, it's not something that you can measure like 2 plus 2 equals 4. It's just that it's, it's there and it contributes to um, the well-being of the students and the community. Yet we're, we have to go to a break. But when we come back, let's talk about what I really want to talk about, the red dirt storytelling. Okay, sometimes <laughs> that's fun to me. <laughs> red dirt storytelling. We'll, okay, we'll go to break and we'll be right back. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, 25 talk shows by 25 dedicated hosts every week, helping us to explore and understand the issues and events in and affecting our state. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. We all play a role in keeping our community safe. Every day, we move in and out of each other's busy lives. It's easy to take for granted all the little moments that make up our every day. Some are good, others not so much. But that's life. It's when something doesn't seem quite right that it's time to pay attention. Because only you know what's not supposed to be in your every day. So protect your every day. If you see something suspicious, say something to local authorities. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, Hawaii's leading digital media platform for civic engagement, raising public awareness on tech, energy, diversification, and globalism. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Hi, we're back, and it's flag day, and so I'm wearing my flag. For those of you that, anyway, forget it. <laughs> nice on you. Yes, Jimmy Toriyama is a dear, dear friend, and he is a leader in the Okinawan community. Was. <laughs> you didn't stop being Okinawan, did you? Uh, no. Wow. Okay. okay, so you're a It's a long story. Yeah. <laughs> so, some time ago, you mm -hmm. did a Red Dirt Storytelling Festival. Mm -hmm. The name is intriguing. Tell me about the Red Dirt Storytelling. Oh, I'd be happy to. Well, before I, I, I talk about the name, um, um, before we got to Red, Red Dirt Storytelling Festival, uh, we did small storytelling sessions, you know, throughout our community. Because I, I, I believe when I was in, when I was chairing the the, the cultural committee there, um, I believe that storytelling was a wonderful way to ignite the imaginations of people about their culture. So we started doing that that that, that activity. And then uh, a friend of mine, I mean, you know him too, uh, Goro Arakawa of the Arakawa yes. story fame, said, came and, and we had this conversation, we were talking story, and he said, oh yeah, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of stories from 
way back when, you know, and it says country days. And then finally it, it dawned on us that maybe we need to do a festival of some kind. So we created this thing called the Red Dirt Festival because it was in Waipahu that we were at. You the know, Red Dirt. Red yes. Dirt. And so we called it the Red Dirt Festival and we drew to the festival, um, I guess what they call concert level storytellers. Pe you know, storytellers that can, can see it, tell stories to really large groups of people. So uh, we, had, we had the festival, we had the storytellers that could do the, do the storytelling, and we talked about stories of old Hawaii, stories of modern Hawaii, uh, stories that, that, that involve other cultures, Celtic cultures, for example. You know, the guy came in, he played the, the harp, and he told stories, it was just a beautiful one. So we had this for two nights, I remember, one or two nights, but it was such a wonderful event. I mean, people felt so, thrilled just being there listening to the story and then there were some obaki stories as they used to call them you know you can't have without you can't, obaki yeah, stories yeah, 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 yeah. story. so we had obaki stories and people were just say, wow this is something and then i think what happened out of one of the results that 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 came out of that was that uh, the cultural center um started offering um, workshops on how to be a storyteller. Yeah, yeah, so people used to write their own stories and that kind of. But you know, it was aimed at uh, um, um, developing stories around the, their experience with the culture. So, so that way, the the, the imaginations would, would come alive, and they would tell each other, and then the interest would be, you know, um, 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 would would develop and, and increase, you know, and. Uh, so I, I think that uh, that mindful that that storytelling festival was such a important thing that happened um, back then. I don't know what's happening now because but, I, I have well, I haven't been around. <laughs> uh, for anybody <clears throat> that is not old enough to have experienced our powers general story, oh, yeah, yeah. that was an experience. And it's too bad that it's gone. Yeah. That store on Waipahu Depot Road mm -hmm. had every kind of gadget known to mankind mm. and some that I didn't know about. Yeah. Mm. It's the only place you could go and find that little whistle that goes on the top of the pressure, oh, wow. uh, pressure cooker. Because, yeah. you know, before if you lost it, you had to go yeah. buy a whole new. Yeah. They had everything yeah. and it was such an experience and they knew where everything was yeah. everything hundreds thousands of little things yeah. so it was a real experience just being part of that yeah. and and it's kind of sad that all of that it, it's too bad that that, that places or stores uh, like our cars with that kind of personality yes. uh, is not not around anymore you know and no. but but they are, they are pokers, you know, you, you go around and you talk to people, you see interesting things happening through. So tell us a little bit more about the Okinawan community. Well, I think it's very, it's thriving. I mean, it's, oh, it is. it's with uh, the governor. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it goes way beyond. No, I'm saying, but now that we have yeah. a governor, people are aware yeah. that there is an yeah. Okinawan yeah. Well, he's, he's the pride and joy of the community, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the Okinawan community is doing very well. Um, it, it, um, it'll so I think it, I think it broke ground on on a shopping complex that they're going to build right next to the, the cultural center. Where is that? Um, that's in uh, Uke Street in uh, Waipio. Waipio. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a beautiful piece of property, and uh, when it's fully developed, you it will be a cultural store. I think there will be some Okinawan. You know, uh, retail stores, I think, over there, and some other eateries and that kind of stuff, I think. Now, if, again, real quick, mm -hmm. most people don't know, you know, this. the Americans gave the island of Okinawan to the Japanese because they, out, they didn't know that there's a difference in the culture, mm -hmm. the Americans. And so we have people today that still don't. Give us a really short, <laughs> the difference in the Okinawan community and mainland Japan culture. Mm. I mean, here people marry and you could get all mixed up. Well, yeah, I, I, I'd be happy to. I mean, I, I'm not an expert on that, but um, one of the fundamental differences is that 
Oh, Okinawa was was a place by itself. It's right. a separate, isolated, and it grew and developed its own culture, unique culture. Even the language is different, and um, <clears throat> so so they were very uh, 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 proud of who they were, you know. And and when 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 the uh, Japanese uh, uh, um, samurai, the shogunate, began to invade uh, uh, um, uh, Okinawa and started to dominated, um, they, they were very um, not happy about that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And some, some of that feeling still like persists today, actually. And in fact, if you go to Okinawa, you see a lot of sentiments that says, well, you know, why, why are we connected? And, and one of the targets is the uh, military bases mm. today, I, I think. Oh, they've been trying to get rid of those for, what, yeah. 15, 20 yeah. years well, now? Well, you should see the land that they control. It's, oh, that's everywhere. It's crazy. <laughs> just like here, the yeah, land they like control, here. yeah. It's like Hawaii, really, when you think about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but here, when they were, they came into Hawaii, you know, during the plantation days, did they come with the Japanese, or was that a separate? No, separate. Um, <clears throat> they weren't granted um, immigration status for, for a long, long time. And it was a fellow by the name of Toyama Kyuzo, as a matter of fact, <laughs> no relation, <laughs> who, who went to Tokyo and he convinced the government uh, the, to, to allow Okinawans to emigrate to different parts of the world. And once that was approved, the floodgates were open because economically, um, uh, it was it was not easy living back then, so they, they moved out, and many of them came to Hawaii. Um, <clears throat> but actually, one of the when I was doing a story, I wrote an article about the Higa family, and and then they were they, the Higa, and when they emigrated from Okinawa, <clears throat> one of the things that 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 they talked about was that. Okinawa wasn't granted immigration status simply because the Japanese government felt that they weren't proper enough to represent them in the world. And I was thinking to myself, wow, that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> terrible. You yeah. know? But, but eventually they, they overcame that. And, and, and a lot of the, the feelings that, that, that was engendered back then kind of carried forth to Hawaii. But you know, we have kind of blended very well. Oh yeah, because I was reading that even on the plantation they had Okinawan villages and Japanese villages. Oh yes, yeah. yes. That they were separate. Yes. And it was only the Americans that couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> well, that's their problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's all. But, but the plantation actually was was a great um, um, integrator of cultures. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, um, uh, I'm going to a, a Big Island reunion come September, and I will be doing a doing a, a, a little keynote address there. And I will be talking about the plantation being uh, a tremendous uh, force for integration, and and I think it's it's kind of like the the foundation for um, the low spirit, the, the, uh, the causing the melding of uh, you know oh, all, yes. all, all all that. And that and that there. language that came, a pigeon that came out of, oh, yeah, of all course. of those people yeah, trying to too. communicate yeah, with each other. Right. Yeah, that because there there was this. This inter interaction. And if, we, if there was no interaction, there was no need to talk big, right. right? So I think all of those kinds of things played into what we are today, you know, an aloha state. I, I think it was just absolutely wonderful to. Uh, uh, now I've read all kind of different things, but the Ever Plantation, mm -hmm. from what I've read, was wonderful in that they provided schools, yeah. hospitals. Yeah medical care, everything, mm -hmm. f including a library, yeah. for all of their workers. It wasn't uh, slave labor. I mean, yeah, it was hard work, but it, they still provided for their people. It was paternalistic. I mean, they yeah. cared for everybody. But, yeah. but, but, but because they wanted to uh, ensure that there were concentrations of uh, labor within areas that they needed them, you know, yeah. like Eva, yeah, the plantation, the grow by growing sugar cane as well as refining it, uh, harvesting and refining it. So, you know, to ensure that the labor force is there, they had to do all those kinds of things. But the outgrowth of that is that or the, or the, 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 the 
the benefit of that was that people integrated. They, yes, they came they together. They married each they other. They married each other. <laughs> they, they played with each yeah. other. They shared each other's food. And so. that's, to me, that's the beauty of living here, is how every culture is willing to share yeah. with yeah. each other. Now, you said you're going in September? Yes. Will you come back and tell us all about it when you get back, after September? <laughs> Right? Well, I'm going to, actually, it's going to be in Las Vegas. Uh, That's okay. <laughs> you, you don't want to hear about Las Vegas. I want you to do the storytelling. Of yeah, course I do. Well, of course. We, okay. Well, let's, let's talk about it back when it comes. When you come yeah, back. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. It's been a pleasure spending this time with you. And I we really look forward to you coming back and telling yeah. us all those stories. I, I had a lot of fun this okay. morning. Thank you, Marsha. Thank you. Aloha, and we'll see you next week.